We're joined now in the studio by Asia business expert Tal Rashev for a look at the situation in Nepal. Mr. Rashev, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, I mean, Nepal was already in a difficult situation economically before the earthquake hit. How does this impact the uh, Nepalese economy? Can you give us some more numbers, figures? Well, uh, it uh, hurts it in the most severe way because uh, Nepal was uh, uh, finally catching up a little bit on the last years, uh, having a 5% growth uh, last year and ex being expected to have uh, more to, uh, this year in 2015. And now they have to struggle against uh, a, a, a tremendous fall in tourism, which is a very central source of income. Uh, if uh, the, the infrastructures are hurt, any plan for technological uh, uh, development in uh, Nepal will have to be waiting now for, for years to come. And uh, the, above all, the, the great problem is that uh, I don't believe that the Nepalese government has got enough funds to finance all this uh, recovery. Now, Nepal for many, many years has been dependent on foreign aid, initially grants, then loans. I mean, why is it that the Nepalese economy never really picked up as much as other economies in the region? It's a combined issue. First of all, there's an issue of, a, a, of, let's say, way of thinking, of mentality, of culture, which is not in favor of progress, of economical uh, uh, progress. And people are putting their effort in other places. And the second point is that the country in the last uh, decades was uh, torn apart by internal problems, some of them between the Maoist the rebels and the army, some of them between uh, different fractions of the government and the, the royal families themselves. So the country was was not a, a pronouncing a, a good uh, atmosphere for investments and it was not a providing a stable economic uh, plan in order to, to progress. So, and uh, a part of that, uh, and a part of the guerrilla war and the internal uh, uh, fractions, is there was also uh, the, the disasters. This is not the first uh, natural disaster that hit uh, Nepal. Uh, all of this was uh, always a red light in front of investors and developers. Of course, also one of the issues there has been that uh, it, it wasn't very clearly registered where the money goes, to some extent uh, important infrastructure projects were underfunded. I mean, there were a lot of other issues, right? I mean, how might this, this particular disaster, which is certainly much bigger than any disaster we've seen recently, how might this affect or impact Nepal and Nepal's future uh, development? Well, the, the, there's a big question and there's a big chance also behind it because now Nepal is in a good... Um, you mean it might be an opportunity? It might be even an opportunity. It's a bit difficult to say it one why people are being buried and uh, burned. But uh, yes, there is an opportunity because Nepal is now in growth. Nepal is in good uh, hope, in good optimism uh, for economical issues. Uh, money will be flowing in from other countries, not from Nepalese uh, sources, of course. But uh, combining all this together, maybe it might be a good opportunity to uh, build better infrastructure and uh, make the money flow into uh, economical, technological investments that will start a new, uh, a new growth for the economy. It's possible. Okay, well, it'll be wonderful to see if that actually comes to fruition. It'll be very, very nice to see. Tal Rashid, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Funka.